Welcome back. Sports Director Clayton Beery is here with us now. Clayton, busy week in sports. That's right. Exciting week in sports. Absolutely. It was. Now, Courtney's been whining because she didn't get to go to opening day. She's being I know. A I really wanted to go. I mean, tickets, though, like, I even checked on eBay. We're starting at $80, so. Yeah. There's 161 Steve. more games. I don't know. But <laughs> I'm, I'm needing some basketball highlights. I was, in, I was in night class last night, which is pretty admirable. I think Mom and Dad watch this on YouTube, so. You didn't skip. Didn't skip wow. for a basketball game. That's so impressive. Clayton. And it was the final four. I know, I know. They're I even got your back. basketball, Courtney. I know you're disappointed. We'll get baseball in a second. All right. I'll as throw in a few references in for you. <laughs> but I've got your basketball for you. The final four in Atlanta this weekend. Now, apparently, rumor has it, it's good to have some size on your team. Last time Georgetown made it to the final four in 1985, they were led by a big fella by the name of Patrick Ewing. Now, 22 years later, this year, again in the final four, the Hoyers now rally behind all of seven feet two inch junior center Roy Hibbert. So size may be a factor. We'll see. On Saturday, the Hoyas met Ohio State in Atlanta. Now they also brought their seven footer to the plate for the, sec for the first of two semifinal games. In a matchup that was supposed to be a battle of the big men, it was the small six foot freshman Mike Conley Jr. from Ohio State that took over the game. And here we are at the George Dome. There's John Thompson III, head coach of Georgetown. And Thad Mata for Ohio State getting ready to start off the first game in the semifinals. First quarter, halfway through, Jonathan Wallace for three points. He would have 19 on the day. He would be shooting threes all day. You'll see in a second. Here comes Dewan Summers with the miss land. There's big fella Roy Hibbert to put away the trash. Roy Hibbert, one of six rebounds, 19 points. He's not much of a factor in this game. This guy right here, Mike Conley, the sweet pass to Jamar Butler. Reverse lay-in, and Ohio State goes up six with about five minutes left. Now, Odin's on the bench right now, so it's all up to this little guy, Mike Conley Jr., sweet move and the dish. There you see Odin on the bench. He's in foul trouble early in the game, but he'd get it in, in the second half. Here's the rebound. And he knows what to do with it. There it is, down hard. Puts Ohio State up 12 with 15 li minutes left in the game. Ohio State's not done, or I should say Greg Oden's not done, as it certainly becomes the Greg Oden show in the second half. Oden would finish with 13 points, nine rebounds. Guess what, they come all in the last 20 minutes of play. There's Jonathan Wallace, open for another three. Ties the game up at 44, but Greg Oden says that's as close as you're going to get. Easy lay-in for two. Puts Ohio State up two with eight minutes to play, and they're not finished. Ohio State again. Jamar Butler at the top of the key, open for three. He finished with 10 points on the day. Puts Ohio State up eight, and they're still not finished. Up six now. Greg Oden gets the ball, the shot, and gets the roll. That's what happens when you're good. Good things just seem to happen to you. Georgetown fighting their way back. They're down nine. Jonathan Wallace is going to put in another three to put them within six with 21 seconds to play, but it's not going to be enough. As Jonathan Wallace of Georgetown misses the final shot, Ohio State wins 67 to 60. They go on to face the winner of the UCLA Florida game in the finals. With that win, the Hoyas reach the finals for the first time since 1985, where they will play the winner of the UCLA Florida semifinal game, which also proved to be an inter interesting matchup as well as it was the rematch of last year's national championship match. Led by Joe Kim Noah, the Gators won that game by 16 points, and this year, Florida's back with the, almost the same team, four out of their five starters from last year, so they're going to be good, and they're going to look to blow out the UCLA Bruins again this year. Take a look. Here we are for our second of two national semifinal games. Head coach Ben Howland of UCLA trying to rally his troops. There's Corey Brewer, a member of last year's national championship team. He's hoping to repeat. He had 16 points in last year's final game. Midway through the first, Florida with the ball down one. Corey Brewer drives on Aaron Aflalo, picks up a foul on Aflalo. That's his third foul of the game. He's going to have to sit for the rest of the half. And that's unfortunate for UCLA. He would not score a point in the first half and would not be much of a factor in the game. So UCLA is going to have to rally without him. Darren Callison, a nice dish to Alfred Mbouye. He finishes with five points, three rebounds coming off the bench. Florida up six now. UCLA, the missed shot. Florida takes it down. Tareen Green with the ball. He finds Walter Hodge. He goes inside to Noah. Noah back out to Tareen Green. The move to Jay. Oh, that's pretty. Green with 10 points on the day, and Florida's not finished. Up six now. No with the ball. He finds Corey Brewer in the corner, open for three. That puts Florida up nine in the first half. Brewer would have a big game. 
Second half now, Florida up 11, looking to add some more. Tareen Green with the ball, he's gonna slow it down and he finds Corey Brew who finds a three. Or does he? Oh yes he does, he puts him up 14 now. Brewer, I said he'd have a big game, he needs all scorers with 19 points on the day. UCLA trying to come back down, 17. He's gonna find Luke Richard and Ba Mute, say that five times fast. He finishes with a modest two buckets on the day. Florida up 13 now. Joakim Noah trying to take it himself. Misses. Gets some help from Chris Richard with authority. Gets the bucket and the no-no. He finished with 16 points off the bench. And Florida goes up 13 now. Noah again with the rebound and the foul. And of course, you're going to get a little pounding and yelling from that fellow. Florida loves it. They go on to win the game. They're going to meet Ohio State in the finals after this victory, they win 76 to 66. With that win, Florida creates an interesting matchup between Ohio State and Florida regarding national championships, because if you remember, those two schools faced off in the National Football Championship for college football, and now Monday, that marked the first time that the two same schools met for basketball and football in the national championship game. I don't have any highlights for you. Florida won the game, if you haven't heard. They completed the repeat for college basketball, and in the last 12 months, that's three national championships for that school. So they are on top of college athletics right now. That concludes the college basketball season for us at SLU 22. But do not fret. We've got a new season ahead of us. Courtney, I know, is excited. And that season is Major League Baseball. The Major League Baseball season began this Sunday in St. Louis, where the Cardinals played host to the New York Mets in a rematch of last year's National League Championship Series. Here we are in Bush Stadium for opening day. Hey, hey, that's a pretty sight for sore eyes. 2006 World Champion flag. Bob Gibson coming out to throw the first pitch. There's Stan the Man Musial showing the swing for the ladies. And here we are in the top of the third. Carlos Delgado at the plate with two runners on. He hits one deep. Back to the wall. Taguchi reaches. Not enough, unfortunately. Two runners coming to score. Paul Duca comes in. Carlos Beltran right behind him. And Carlos Delgado puts the Mets up 2-0 on the double. And that's how the top of the third would end. Here's the bottom of the third now. Carlos trying to get one back. Runner on third. Squeeze plays on. Carpenter's bun, unfortunately, is not. He leaves Kennedy out to dry. And we do not pick up him. Here's the replay. Ball bounces off the plate. It does stay fair, unfortunately, for the Cardinals and uh, Adam Kennedy. They do not score the run. Now we go to the top of the fourth. Base is loaded for Paul LaDuca. LaDuca hits it up the middle. He's going to pick up two RBIs for this one. Mets will go up 4 nothing. and Carpenter struggling. He did not have a very good day. He went six innings. He gave up five earned on nine hits. And the Mets just seemed to know where he was pitching every single time. Glavin, on the other hand, had a great day. He was dealing. 3-2 on Preston Wilson. He gone. So There's he, one he out. Glavin strong through six innings. He gave up one earned run. Here he is in the sixth. Gets Kennedy for the short fly. It may drop. Does it drop? Alou says no. He may be old, but that man's got some quick little feet on him. And some agility as well. Great play by the old fella. Bottom six. Glavin again. Preston Wilson trying to get something going. Eckstein on second. Round and third. Coming to home. Oh, wow. Beltron beats him with the throw. That was a rope straight on the line. Didn't bounce. That's why that kid gets paid the millions. He maintains the 5-1 lead for New York. And the Cardinals fail to score there. Here we are, top eight, rolling with the bases loaded. One more chance. He hits it hard, but he hits it right into the double play. Reyes to Delgado. Ends the eighth inning. Mets go on to win 6-1. to one. Unfortunately, the Cardinals didn't get it done on opening day. It's a long season, though. Not to worry. 161 games still left. I know. So I think we'll be all right. Spirits are high. Now, Clayton, as my bracket predicted, might I add, Florida defended their national championship now. Speaking of defending titles, what do you think the Redbirds' chance to defend their World Series championship this year? You know, it's tough. I'd love to see them do it, but they got a target on their backs, and it's going to be tough for them to do. I agree, but we can hope so. We can. Doesn't hurt to hope. Definitely. Well, the Redbirds aren't the only thing that's red. I've got a story for you that took place right here on campus involving red wine, so stick around. Welcome back to SLU News 22. A few weeks ago, I had the chance to stop by the Samuel Couples House to check out an event that I would recommend to anybody over 21. And there are two left this year, so take a look at this, and if you feel like stopping by, check out the next two events. The uncorking of a new event at the Samuel Couples House gives students, administration, and friends of the university something to whine about. The inaugural Wine on Wednesday event on February 28th featured a blind wine tasting and special guest speaker Scott Hepper. 
Following the tasting, Hepper, the floral manager and designer for Straub's Fine Grocers, poured out advice for anyone interested in hosting an in-home wine tasting, and also demonstrated ways to create an inexpensive yet breathtaking floral arrangement. These events provide an inexpensive and convenient way for anybody interested in getting involved in the wonderful world of wine. Additional Wine on Wednesday events are planned for April 25th and May 30th. Admission is $5 and reservations are required as space is limited. After all, a variety of reds and whites is the perfect way to put a cork on those end-of-the-year blues. For SLU News 22, I'm Courtney Brown. Well, if you weren't with us at the beginning of the show or you haven't noticed the difference in appearance, we have moved to our new location, Suite 247, the second floor of the BSC, right above K SLU. We're really excited about the new area and we'd like to thank everyone who helped us move all the stuff across campus. And maybe you can help us also now. Now we won't ask you to move, but we'd love for you to join the team and do whatever you'd like. We could use people in editing, filming, doing my job, taking Courtney's job, and certainly set design. So if you're interested, please contact us. And also, one more thing for those of you who are such big fans of it. Now, Chaffetz Arena a couple weeks ago sold the name Chaffetz for $12 million. I don't know if you remember that, Courtney. And we have this huge oh, no. white space back here, and we've had a meeting. We've decided for $3.5 million, you can buy this and, and write whatever you want, advertise whatever you want. So if you're interested in that. Keep it clean, though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Three and a half million. We're willing to negotiate. But uh, get, it, yeah. get at us after the break. All you millionaires out there. Sure. Take care, buddy. <laughs> that's it for this week. I'm Brent Carney. And I'm Courtney Brown. Stay classy, Slew.